Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson in my beginner piano course level one. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. In this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about expression in a beautiful piece that has kind of a dark mood. And I, I titled it Floating on a Lake, but it could also be a dark wind tonight. It's just one of those very kind of emotional, dark sounding pieces that I think many of you will love. And there are a couple of new things in it that I would like to explain before we play the piece. So as you can see on the sheet music, there is a little eight with a very long dashed line. And that means that everything underneath that is going to be played an octave higher. So the first note in the right hand is going to be an E. This is middle C, high C and E. Now, if you see an eight above the music, it means you have to play it an octave higher. So we're going to jump up to the next E and we're going to start it from there and then just follow the melody. And the octave higher finishes where the little bracket, the dash line bracket finishes. So in this case, the entire right hand is going to be played an octave higher. And the purpose of this symbol is to make it easier for us to read music. If that symbol wasn't there and I wanted to play these higher notes, then I would need to use a lot of ledger lines which would make it very difficult to read the notes. So what we can do is notate the music in the middle of the staff where it's much easier to read and add an eight sign above with a little bracket that shows us that that specific section is going to be played an octave higher. Now the same thing can happen if I put the eight underneath the music. So if the eight and the little bracket is underneath the notes and the bracket is closing upwards, it means you have to play everything an octave lower. So if you see the eight above the notes, it's an octave higher. If you see the eight underneath the notes, it's an octave lower. Now, what if we want to play two octaves higher, then we can use 15. So if 15 is above the notes, you're going to play two octaves higher. So one, two. And if 15 is underneath the notes, we're going to play two octaves lower. So one, two. The music is unchanged, the notes and the intervals are the same, but we start in a different octave on the piano. The second thing I want to talk about is the writ sign, which you see in bar 13. The sign comes from an Italian word, ritenuto, which means to slow down and the short form is usually R-I-T and the dot. Sometimes you see the whole thing written out, ritenuto, but most of the times it's just going to be a writ. And ritenuto means that we get slower little by little. So it's not abrupt change in speed, it's a gradual change in speed. And it's very effective, especially at the end of a piece where you kind of want to slow down and finish something. And if you see a ritenuto, you have to slow down little by little, a little bit more with every single note that comes after the sign, but before the sign, everything is played up tempo. So let me demonstrate this uh, piece to you and then I'm going to talk you through the details. So you can see what I was saying about the mood. By using this eight sign above the notes, we can play the music quite high up, which creates even a more mystical sound. Let's start with the right hand. It's in four beats and in the right hand, all you can see is crotchets all the way through and a very specific pattern that keeps repeating. So although there are lots of notes there, it's actually very simple. You only have to look at the very first note in each bar and the pattern is the same all the way through. So it's a sequence in a way, apart from the final chord. So we're going to start on E, middle C, high C, E, and the pattern is skip, step, step, skip, step, step, five, three, two, one. And all we're going to do is play this pattern 
Well, we're going to move our hand up and down, but use the same finger numbers. So five, three, two, one, then I move down to the D. Five, three, two, one, up. Five, three, two, one, up. Five, three, two, one, and so on. So the hand position stays the same, but we're just moving, shifting it to a different note, but using the same intervals and the same finger numbers. So let's just watch out for that very first note. Is it going up or is it going down? Starting on the E. Moving up, back to E, down to the D, back to E, F, G, A, and here we cross over three onto the C, two on the B, one on the A, two across the one, and one five on the C and A. So we finish on a harmonic interval. You can count in yourself, but it's, it's very easy because all the note values are the same, so you just have to create this continuous even sound. Now here, once we get to the end, that's where our slowdown is. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and we slow down and the last note has a fermata, so we have to hold it quite long and create that peaceful ending effect. Left hand is going to start on A and E, so that's middle C, and we're going to start in an A, uh, E harmonic interval. So as you can see, all of these harmonic intervals are tied, so we have to hold them for eight counts for two bars. So that's the first one. Then we're going to move one and two onto the D, F, and back to one, five. Then we move down, shift down one note to the G, D, same fingers, and then back to A, E. Then we put number three onto the F, number two onto the G, one on the A, four on the E, lift up and back to the starting chord. So a couple of finger changes here and there, but mostly it's staying uh, in this 1-5 position and just moving up and down one note. Now once we put the two together, we have to make sure the two hands go down perfectly together and the left hand is a little bit quieter than the right hand. Moving to DF and shifting to the F. Back to the A and E. Both hands move down to the G. Back to the A position. Now left hand three on the F, right hand five on the F. Moving up to the G. Up to the A. Crossing over E and C two on the G, and C, A, and A, E. Now, two more things to add to the expression. One is the pedal. So what you're going to do is, once you learned the piece quite well, you press down the damper right pedal at the very beginning of the piece where that bracket starts in the bottom, and you're going to hold it all the way to the end, so don't release the pedal anywhere. Now, the reason why I said do this after you learn the piece really well is because if you play a wrong note somewhere in the middle of the piece, that wrong note is going to be sustained all the way to the end by the pedal. So the pedal is very unforgiving when we use it a lot. So make sure you learn the notes really well. So pedal down. And it's going to create this washy kind of mystical sound. The final thing to talk about is the dynamics. We start quietly, we see a little P, and in bar nine, there is a crescendo, a hairpin opening, so we have to get louder as we climb up higher and higher, and in the very end, we get quieter as we slow down and finish on a very gentle chord. So here is the second line dynamics.
and I'm holding it, holding it, and up. If you enjoy this lesson, make sure to check out the premium version of this course, which is going to include a free method book, lots of filmed video tutorials for sight reading exercises, technical exercises, performance pieces, and best of all, you're going to get personal feedback from me to make sure your progress is as smooth and efficient as it can get.